Here's why the end of September car deals could be a lot better this year at car dealerships. You're just going to have to work a little bit for it. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with Amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. We're also going to lay out a roadmap to help you capitalize on the opportunity this month presents, but time is running out, so stay tuned. What's significant about the end of September car deals, Liz, especially this year? Well, anybody who knows anything about car sales can understand the wisdom of buying at the end of the month. That's commonly understood to be true. But there are also four months out of the calendar year that month-end deals are even better than a typical month-end deal. They are March, June, September, and December because these months are also the end of a quarter. Add the end of a quarter motivation to the end of the month and you have a great combination of motivating factors. Everyone wants to finish strong. Which is a big reason why the end of December typically has such big bargaining advantages. It's the end of the month, the end of the quarter, and the end of the year. Well, exactly. But this September has an extra advantage for that impatient buyer who just wants to get out there and buy a car as soon as possible. You know who you are. <laughs> This September is not only the end of the third quarter, we just came out of a very slow sales month and dealers have a lot of ground to make up. They are hungry. August was so slow it dropped the SAR, seasonally adjusted annualized rate, back down to 15.17 million, which was down from 15.9 million in July a setback of 730,000 vehicle registrations in a single month. We just covered this phenomena earlier this week if you missed the video. Right, that was a big whack out of projections for car sales in a single month. Yeah. And now dealers are headed into the end of the quarter operating behind the eight ball. That's right where any car buyer should want to have them. Secondly, inventory levels are now at 2.06 million cars. We just hit this story on Thursday. Go back and see it if you missed it. Faster growing inventory with slower moving sales is a deadly combination for a car market that favors buyers and busts the door down to great car deals. All right. So the market is finally ripe for a good car deal, Is What's next? Well, step one, if you're financing, always have pre-approved financing in place with your own bank or credit union before you even shop. Always. That, that's always step one. If you're paying cash, hold on to that thought for one moment. We'll come back to it. Step two, shop for a better dealer by calling multiple dealerships. Those nearby and those further away from home. Start shopping from the comfort of home. Pretty much every dealer understands that consumers prefer to shop from home, so do it. What you will learn from this process will be invaluable when it comes time to negotiate a final price. Also, there's an extra tip I have for those of you who are particularly price conscious, and hopefully you saw our show on strategic advice for car buyers in today's car market, a show we did not long ago. I recommend you go back and see it. Now here's the special tip that I just referenced. Ask the dealer if they have any specific vehicles that have already been marked down, like a manager's special or a discounted inventory clearance sale. If the dealer says they don't have any, they're probably lying and you should immediately move on to a different dealer. Yeah. Any better dealer has a list ready that the salesman can share with you along with the stock number so you can look up the vehicle on their website. Liz, you also have some great lines for this, so what are they? Well, you know, they totally carry a piece of paper around in their pocket with these stock numbers on them. Well, as soon as I'm on the line with sales, I say, hello, my name is Liz. I'm a price conscious buyer, so I have some questions for you. My options are flexible, so I'm calling to inquire about your discounted or marked down vehicles like manager specials or discounted inventory sales or any great deals that you have. If it's a better dealer on the other end, they will likely immediately say, well, yes, we do have some, ma'am. And then they'll ask if there's any specific type of vehicle that I'm looking for. When I answer that question, they list off what they have for specials, including the price. If they don't have specific vehicles marked down, they'll tell me what they can do on an appropriate vehicle that they have in stock. In some cases, they might have to call me back, but that's fine. I'm okay with a dealer like that having my phone number. I'm getting somewhere, so it's generally a good sign. What if they say you need to come in and find out? Typical. I say I'm doing my legwork by phone from home first and finding out who wants to work with me. If I like the help I'm getting over the phone, I'm more likely to come in. Friends, shopping for a better dealer, somebody that you want to work with, is just as essential to shop for as a better car deal is. You just gotta do it. And you're going to find some bad apples along the way. Well, of course, they are car dealers after all. And it's just a sorting process, so just make the phone calls. If you look through the reference videos on this channel, that's exactly how Joe Lepore found Crestmont Toyota, and he had a great experience there. Yes, he did. How many dealers are you looking to get a positive phone call response from? Uh, two, but it could just be one, like what happened to Joe. I might have to make eight phone calls to find a better dealer, but that's okay. 
I'll just make more calls if needed. And if it's a new car I'm after, to be clear, right now the price should be very near or at dealer invoice. If not invoice, it should be far below MSRP. Definitely not a market adjustment. Anymore. Yeah, no more. I get the verbal price from them over the phone. For now, verbal is good enough because I'm not working the numbers yet. That comes later. Okay, now that you believe you have a good price, what's next? I set up an appointment to do a test drive. Before I go on the test drive, I remind myself that this is nothing more than step one of a business transaction that I'm looking at. I do not allow my emotions to get revved up like, oh, I just love this car even if I really do like it. When the test drive is over, I thank the salesman and just go home. Now that's critical for everyone to understand. Right after a test drive is not the time to sit down and talk numbers. That's precisely what the salesman will want you to do to sit down in the lion's den and get yourself swindled. Yes, that's exactly why you don't sit down with them right then. You have no leverage, which you need badly for a successful negotiation. You have that new car smell on your brain. You're sitting in a very weak spot to bargain, and they have the advantage. They know it. Even as business-focused as I am, I still leave and plan to do my negotiations from home. But I always thank my salesman for his time, and I say, I'll call you tomorrow. And then the next day, that's what I do. This is important because if you say you'll do it, Make sure you do it so they know that you mean business. Right. It's a common belief in the car business that buyers are liars. There's a bit of truth in that because most people, when they leave a car lot and say they'll call, they never do. That's not me. I'm leaving because I'm staying in control, not because I'm backing down. I'll call him the next day to let him know I'm still working on it. It keeps him hungry and hopeful. Well, that's some great psychology right there, Liz, but it doesn't get left there, does it? No. That's when I ask for his email and say, Watch for an email from me shortly, and then I'll email him on the vehicle. I think I know exactly what's coming next. Yes, you do. It's on our website with a few modifications. Since I already have the price, I state it in the email and ask him to confirm. It reads, thanks for helping me on the test drive on whatever vehicle it was. It's a good vehicle, and I'm in agreement that $31,295, as an example, is a good price. To move forward, I would like the following information for you. Number one, confirm the price of $31,295. Number two, list any additional fees you want me to pay that are not detailed on the dealer invoice. Number three, any dealer add-ons or products I'll be required to pay for. Number four, list any rebates or incentives currently offered on this vehicle using my zip code. Number five, a final out-the-door price, including tax, incentive, and all fees. And number six, if you're a cash buyer, you're also going to want to ask this. If I make a substantial down payment, do you accept personal checks? That's an important question because that's the same response to how you can pay for your car. If they'll take a substantial down payment by personal check, they'll also allow you to pay for the car by personal check. It's essentially the email template we have on our website, but as you said, with some modifications. You're initiating this contact by phone first and then taking a test drive there too. Yes, I'll also be updating the email template on our website to include these initial steps that I just laid out because the time has come to include more in-person contact with the dealerships to get their attention and cooperation. I would totally agree with that. Thank you. No, Liz, I thank you because I'm sure everyone in our audience is grateful to you for laying out such a clear path to success when car shopping. It's the favorable car market we have right now, friends, and I promise you, if you start your car shopping by making phone calls first and then taking test drives next at the dealers where you find people you like, you'll have much greater success with your car deals. Just remember that you must always leave after the test drive and then always call the next day if you say you will. You don't want to be one of those buyers who are liars. When you lie, your leverage is gone. You must be taken seriously to get the deal you want. For my cash buying audience out there, go back and see this video, Don't Say I'm Paying Cash at Car Dealers in 2023. It's an interview between me and Kevin that totally applies to you right now. Comment below if you'd like to see more shows like this one that walk through the steps of buying a car, a role play of sorts. And that was especially well done today, Liz. Oh, thanks. Well, we've done this before with great success, haven't we? Yes, and remember what we said the other day, friends, that it's the total price, the final number that should really matter to you. If the dealer treats you well, gives you a great out-the-door price, what difference does it make if the dock fee is more than ideal or more than you wanted to pay for that? If the final number is great, that should be what really matters to you. Exactly. It's always the entire price that matters. Arguing over one number instead of the entire number makes no sense whatsoever. By the way, with the work we are doing to connect you with better dealers out there, we just ask you for one favor if we would connect you to one of our contacts. Let us know how it went for you. Send us an email to kevinthehomeworkguy at gmail.com. Testimonial videos for us to share with our audience would be phenomenal too. 
A couple reminders. Any car salesmen or dealers watching out there today who might be thinking, hey, I can offer no-nonsense deals for Homework Guy viewers, text us right away at 701-441-3399, and we'll definitely be in touch with you. Also, we have finalized the plan for memberships here on YouTube. Those will be announced shortly. We'll do a separate show to talk about it. And no, nothing will change for our typical channel viewers. We will continue to broadcast free shows for you. Some of the membership levels we have planned will include lists of better dealers we are aware of and some of the really terrible ones. Yeah. And we'll even do reviews of car buyer orders and car contracts for some of you, as well as connect you with smartly priced vehicles we have found around the country. We will also be offering direct phone contact with Liz or me. More on that coming soon. And watch for our coming book for car buyers with the help of a new staff member and the many sales contacts we have around the country. It will be the best car buyer's manual ever published, and it will include input from several people who have spent the last many years immersed in the dealership model and who know the business inside and out. Together, our team knows exactly where the car market is right now with a variety of brands, and we have powerful tools to help you win on your next car deal. As you can see, we're constantly improving the value of our channel to viewers, so we're reminding to you to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. And give this video a like if you appreciate what we did for you today. By the way, anyone who wishes to make a donation to show us some love, you can find a link in the description box for our charity to help children. That's where we'd love to see your support. GiveSendGo.com slash WillistonKidsFirst. Help support our mission to help the children here. Right here, courtesy of the Homework Guy team and our show, is where you'll always find the most dependable tips and helpful information to assist you with finding an enjoyable car buying experience in today's car market. And if you just recently joined the Homework Guy channel as a subscriber, we thank you, appreciate you, and welcome you aboard. Also, thanks to our many faithful followers who just keep coming back. And to all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth, justice, and transparency in the car business and always will. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.